In this video, I'm going to give you eight signs you may be joining a scam. So as you'll probably see in the next couple of days, next couple of months, you're going to see a lot of opportunities coming out and your head's going to be spinning like mine is going, what's a scam? What's not a scam? Because all these opportunities are coming out for all the opportunities that are coming out. There's a few on the back end that already failed and actually scammed some people, right? So those have scammed people and some new ones are coming out. You're going, what are the signs and can I tell if someone's a scam, something's a scam and should I join it? So I'm going to kind of give you some insights of how you could kind of determine for yourself if this is a scam, if you should join it or not. Here's the reason why I'm really making this video. I am encountering a lot of people who have gotten scammed. I personally have been scammed myself, you know, so I'm, no one's really immune to this. But there's some things, you know, out there that could potentially help us to kind of decipher something that's a scam and to protect ourselves. So that's why I'm really making this video to, you know what, if I could do anything to put a kibosh on some of these stinky, lousy scammers out there, I'm going to do it with this video to kind of showcase, you know, if you're thinking about an opportunity, um, think about some of these things um, to determine if you might join a, a scam. Now, the reason we probably look at a lot of opportunities, right? You're hearing people say, go ahead, you know, you need to diversify your income source, right? Have multiple source of income because if one flops, the other one could probably survive right and to that i'm thinking maybe that's why these scammers are still around right because if we stuck with one opportunity right we had one opportunity was a good one for us then we wouldn't need to be searching around right and then no one could come in and infiltrate what you're doing and actually scam you because you wouldn't be looking so that's kind of the reason like i mentioned i hate the scammers and i really want them to go away and so if I could help some folks kind of navigate, not getting into them at all, then maybe we could save ourselves from, you know, some of the heartache that we do go through. But I'm going to say this before I actually go on to say that if you didn't make money in a business, right, you know, not all businesses are bad, even if you lost money. So if you've lost money in a business opportunity, an income opportunity, it's not all bad. It could have been something, right, the idea that you didn't make any money or I didn't make any money, right? Because we didn't promote it, right? We didn't do what we we're supposed to do. We got into that business with the intent that we weren't going to do anything and we didn't and we got no results. So it wasn't the fault of the business. So we can't really label that a scam. What we're going to label as scam is really the people whose intent is to create something to literally seduce us and take our monies with truly the intent that once they got it, they have no intentions of fulfilling and giving us anything in return. So that's what we're going to label as a scam. The folks who deliberately create something, seduce us into these opportunities, and then, you know what, take our money and then they close up shop the next day in a sense. So how can we tell the signs that you're joining a scam? Well, let's start off with the first one, the time the business has been in operation. So you know what? For that one, it's kind of a tricky one. And here's why that one is tricky. You know, if a business just came out, it's like, oh, it's less than a year. And we've asked that question on calls, right? If you're going to a presentation call, you're probably like, well, how long has the business been in operation? But take that one with some other information. So you want to take that, how long has the business been in business? But you got to put it in the framework of, does it make sense for the business model to be in business less than a year, right? So let's say this business, for, for example, a business that like um, a network marketing company, if they just started out and they've been in business less than one year, that's not to say that's a scam, that they're going to come and go because the business the model of any business, they have to start, right? They have to have a start. So a business model of a network marketing company probably, you know, have the flair that it just started, so it's going to continue, that they're not just making this company to take your money and then go. But in the same sense, if you're looking at a business that say the business model is I'm going to give you 10% return on your money, right? I'm going to quadruple your money in, in 10 days, right? That business model sounds like it's riskier, right? Because it's going to give you a return, such a grand return in 10 days that if it's less than a year, you're going, okay, that's a red flag that says, well, maybe you're trying to sucker me into giving you my money. And then in a couple more days, you'll disappear because you can't sustain this business model that long. So that's why I mean, you know, really look at the business model when you look at this 
how long the business has been in business. How would you kind of check, right, how long the business has been in operation? Now, for stuff like this, especially those income opportunities, that seems a little bit like, wow, too good to be true kind of stuff. Those are the ones, you know, you got to temper it and kind of check on the business model. And then based on the business model to make the decision if, okay, is it going the scammy way or this is more, you know, how a natural business would progress. How you'd look at that is you find the information out from someone who you trust that's close to the source. Because some of these businesses, right, are started by someone who knows someone who has um, some interaction with the person in the industry. So some of these companies are started by people who, you know, you've watched their videos before, you've seen them throughout um, their careers doing things. So you, you might not know them per se, but you have a sense of their character and who they are, right? So that's one way of deciphering, you know, how long a business has been in business and if you could really trust. Another way to do it is to actually go to a website called Who's, W-H-O-I-S dot com and literally take the, the website address and put it in the box and see how long that domain name has been registered. So I'm going to quickly show you how that is done. So on the Who's site, you see Who's up here. It has to enter your d the domain or IP and then you hit Who's. So I just went to Warrior Plus, got a, a domain of the advertising product, put it in here. And when you put it in, it refreshed and it tells you the date that that website is registered. So it gives you an idea when it's registered. So remember when I say, you know, how long the business has been in business, but you're supposed to temper it with what the business model is. So if the business model is, you know, I'm trading your money and in seven 30 days i'm going to quadruple it and the business just started that's why you see some people on the internet they get in term they get into some of these business opportunities that say i'm going to double your money triple your money early because they know at some point the business can't sustain that right so they're going to close but they're going to last long enough to pay you out and anyone else who's enticed to jump in on the back end you won't get paid out because the business model is going to shut down probably before the year's end. So that's why a lot of folks jump on these hot things before things. And that's why sometimes you see some of these mega stars on the internet. They're into these business and they're on first. So they made a whole boatload of money. You came in last, didn't make any. And it seemed like, well, everything was fine. And that's why they say, you know what? Put in money you can afford to lose. Because when you're looking at this kind of business model, the one-year mark kind of says, you know what? They can't sustain this for a long time. Because if they could, guess what? Most of these business would have been here for us to just jump in whenever we want. So that's a good way to kind of tell or get an insight. Because you can't really determine it just by the, the how long the years are. But that's one part of the puzzle that if you get that one, it's like, okay, that's something else you could use to add on and really figure out if it's going to be a scam kind of deal for you. The next thing you want to look at is the bogus licensing and registration papers. Some of these scammers, they like to present um, certificates or documentation as if they're um, legitimate. And the reason they do it, and they do it like almost like as a flash kind of a thing. They want to flash it because you're really not paying attention to what this certificate is. It just appears like it's an endorsement that someone credentialed them. So you saw the paper that, oh, they have a certificate, but people don't really investigate them, right? It's like, well, how do I investigate these certificates? They look like it's a, a real one. So you just accept it and your mind just kind of like, oh, they have a certificate. That means they must be endorsed or approved by someone. So be mindful when you're seeing the scammers make their website and they start putting up bonus licensing and registration pa papers. That might be a clue that they're trying to really get you to buy into the idea that they're legitimate because they have some documentation. Another thing you want to ch check out is the fake leaders and the owners behind companies, right? And that's not to say that, you know what, some people who start businesses, um, they really just are normal people who don't want the, the fame, right? There's people who love fame and there's, there's some people who just don't like fame. They like to be behind the scenes um, and do their work. Me personally, I don't care to be out there, right? But there's some companies that get started and you can't find out anything about them. You don't even know that their real voice, you don't know, you don't know anything about them, right? Everything that they do as the company 
is behind the scenes in a sense and you can't have any access to anything that's kind of real that's any have anything that's tangible that you could say yes i could put my finger on that this is real so be mindful of those kind of things now that might be a hard thing because i mean like i mentioned there's people out there sometimes who make businesses and really do not want to be in the limelight right so they have to create a different picture for them to conduct their business but that's not to say that there's nothing real about it so if you're getting a sense that okay and you have to have this tempered right all these things have to add up to come to something that you're like okay it's all adding up too well all of the pieces are falling the puzzle so just be mindful of that put that as part of the mix is a sign that you know what everything's adding up and this one is adding up as well that it's adding up to something another thing is when you see some poor grammatical spelling or even language because sometimes any one of us right we're trying to write things we don't write perfectly we might use is and it's supposed to be r with an s and no s so that's understandable in the sense that you know people make mistakes when they're right but here's what i want you to put a key on is when you're thinking, okay, this should be an American site, right? But it sounds like um, someone in a different country wrote it. Because there's a certain way Americans talk, right? And there's a certain ways if you're in a different country because of the language, right? There's certain words you would use that you wouldn't use. I've seen where, you know, you could spell something wrong, but when you start using words that well, it just sounds odd, right? It's like no American talks like that. Or, you know, it, you think it's a different sign. It's just, it just doesn't ring true with the culture that they're in. Then that's a kind of a clue like, you know what? It's not ringing true. Because, I mean, if a company is based in the U.S., it should be sounding like a USA kind of company. Their wording should be sounding USA kind of. There shouldn't be any weird words that sound like a British person would say it or an Aussie person would say it, right? So be mindful of the, the grammar, the speech, the way they put things together in totality to kind of kind of figure out the flair of it. True enough, people could misspell a word. I've seen big companies on their website have some spelling and grammatical errors. And it, it just, just happened that I saw grammar, grammatical error just so it happened because you happen to reread it, but that's the flavor of it. If it's not sounding like the country it's native to, that could be a red flag that something is off there as well. Another thing you want to keep stock off is the vague way to make a lot of money. So they're like, oh, we could quadruple your money. And you're going, how? And however they give it, it's like you don't even understand how that is possible. In certain spectrum, you might not understand it, right? If someone's saying, you know, I do Forex, and it's like, you don't understand Forex, but at least you understand that word, Forex. Whatever they do in Forex, you can understand it. But if it's some magical way of turning your money upside down and then shaking out quadruple amount, then it becomes like, what is this mystical thing that you can't explain it in any fashion that I could understand it. Only you understand it. So that's when you kind of have the sensation that this is too odd. That if it's something that you're doing to make money, I should be able to understand it. Maybe in not the nuances of what you're doing, but to have some idea of how this is even possible. So that's one thing. When the plumbers, you know, tell you got to make lots of money, but somehow they can't give you any understanding of it. And we're not going for, you know, you're going to understand the point to do it yourself, but just to understand what the heck they're doing. They make money in real estate, right? They make money selling widgets. They have to be some form of the way they're making money, right? And if it can't be disclosed to you in any fashion that you get it, it's like another piece of the puzzle that's adding up to be too good to be true. Another thing you probably want to look at is they're urging you to make a decision now. Now, typically you'll probably see this on places like Telegram, WhatsApp, I am not quite sure about Facebook, but pretty much I'm guessing any social media, the scammers come out of the woodwork and they're trying to get you to make some hasty decisions. Now, usually it starts out with, they just came out of the blue, right? They just came out of the blue and they're starting to have a conversation with you and they present you with an opportunity and they're telling you how good it is. And these actually spiral in a matter of, it could be a couple of hours to maybe a couple of days, but not a whole long time, right? It's not like it's over six months, right? It's always a very short window of time that someone comes out of the blue, they're having a conversation and somehow they get you wrapped up to, into it. And then they lather you with, they need you to make a decision because things are moving 
oh so quick, right? You have no time to think. Next thing you know, you're sending someone money and then they got it and you think everything's going to work out okay and they're still in communications with you. And then they tell you there's something wrong. They need more money to do something else. And because you're already going down that spiraling hole, you start putting more money into it. The same thing with some of these other income opportunities, right? Where you could invest and double your money, triple your money. You put money in, you're making some money, and now you've had enough time to see it make money. And now they put out another piece of this money-making thing that says, oh, you know, there's a new package that's out that's going to do this amount. So they launch something else new. And because you've seen some results with what you've done, you're now putting more money in. So they give that sense of urgency or something to have you keep dumping money into it. And then with the time frame point that we looked at, right, where some companies, they, these opportunities just start with the idea that they're not, they can't last long to sustain it. So it's less than a year. And when you start seeing them do that, and it's been less than a year for this company, Company, right so that means there's no track record for a long duration of time to say that they can sustain it they can sustain it long enough to get a lot of people in the people who you know have gotten in they're excited about it they've seen some movement they then tell people that they know right that they love that they want to see make money as well and next thing you know all these people are getting into it dumping more money into it and then by that time it's getting close to the year they decide when to pull the plug because you never know when they're going to pull the plug. Is it two months after they start, three months, four months, six months, 10 months? And so that's the thing. You've seen them last and last to the point that at one day they just get up and then they're gone. So that hasty decision thing is something to watch for. And of course, this is another piece. If you see this, this is another key piece to this, the customer service part, right? You're talking to these folks and it always seems like they're always available to you, right? They're always in a sense, at you, you need them, they're there. You're, instant, you're reaching to, out to them on Telegram or WhatsApp and they're available. Then to the point that they say, you know what, if you're going to have the money tomorrow at this time, okay, I'll come on, we could come on at this time tomorrow and then we can make this arrangement. And you're like, well, if this is some great operation, why is it that you're making yourself available to me at the time that I tell you that I can be there? So they're like, oh, you get off at work at five. Okay, at six o'clock, we could get together and, you know, do this transaction. So always be mindful, especially on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, especially Telegram. These scammers come out of the woodwork and get in, you in conversations and lead you down this spiral and hole. That next thing you know, you're having conversations, you're making arrangements to send funds to someone to do something. So just be mindful of these kind of stuff. And of course, the big takeaway is don't get scammed and then don't scam yourself. And what I mean by don't scam yourself is don't get into opportunities that you know you're not planning on doing anything with. I know of opportunities out there right now that people are getting into and they do it for the sole reason that they're thinking someone else is going to do whatever work it is involved in that opportunity that they might actually make some money on it. But when you do that, you kind of, in a sense, is scamming yourself. You're telling yourself yourself, you know what, I'm just hoping this is going to work because you're not going to do anything to move the needle to make it work. And so you end up leaving whatever that opportunity is with no money. You put money in with the intent that you're going to, you want some out. So either you get scammed, someone took your money and ran, or you get scammed because you put your money in, but didn't do anything to, in a sense, generate any money out of it. So Another piece of this is what do you do with all this info, right? It, it's such a bleak outlook. We're trying to make extra money, diversify, right? Because we realize at this point that we need to make money. It's not a question, should we? It's the, the idea is we need to because life is just the way it is. So what do we do? Do we just throw up the, our hands and say, you know what? I'm done. And for sure, I've done that. I've definitely left the internet scene going, I am done. I can't stand this anymore. I hate this yo-yo of trying this program, that program, I either be scammed or I scammed myself where I jumped into a program, didn't do anything and then, hey, the money's gone and I didn't do anything. So it was totally my fault. But here's the thing. We can do something about it. Our problem is, and why we have fallen to these scams is because we're constantly looking for another business. We're looking for the wrong thing. 
we jump out of one business, right? Either we've been, been scammed, we jumped out of it, and then now we jump back into another one looking for a company. We're constantly looking, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're looking for a company to solve this problem for us. And then that's what's happening. We're getting scammed. We're either having our money taken from us by real scammers, or we're scamming ourselves because we're jumping out of these opportunities. So how can we overcome this? You know, a business opportunity truly cannot solve our money problem. We're the only ones that could solve it because we're the ones with the money. You know, we're giving that money to either the scammers or whatever business opportunity we jump into. We're the ones funding the money to actually participate in that business. Well, how about we do something different? And that's why I partner up with people I trust. You know, I'm tired of going out there trying to figure out which business opportunity to join. And maybe if I join the top, it's going to work out for me right and no one else it works out for because i might be one of the lucky ones that jump into something at the beginning right and whether that one year mark and got my money out before the scammers decide to close it out but then any, anyone else behind me right gets hurt in the process because they jump in their money is gone so i'm choosing to shift the way i'm thinking about how to do opportunities so no longer am i looking for a business opportunity to solve my problem because i realize they haven't and they can't the difference is we can solve it ourselves so i trust people and because of my trust in people that i work with i've been able to make money and so that's why i partnered up with wanda so if you've seen videos that i've talked about wanda before super cool funny as heck real as heck and you know what these are people who that i'm surrounded with that makes money because we're in an environment that just helps each other make money so if this is sounding you know what more intriguing to you with the idea that you know what you've been scammed before probably going to find another business opportunity in a couple of weeks couple of months and go down the same path you've been going down i'm going to show you something that could be a little bit refreshing in this whole world of how to make money that could be much easier than what you're doing much more faster than what you're doing now you know doing it all by yourself trying to find all these opportunities and not get scammed so i invite you to you know what check out wanda's video it's going to be in the description box. You're going to see a very hilarious and funny video that kind of, you know, showcase what we are all going through and struggling with, you know, the idea of making money and how we go about it and struggle with it. And then she's going to show you kind of a different way that you could be making money. So I'm going to encourage you, you know, leave me a comment below in the box there if you want to, or, and definitely check out Wanda's video. And then connect with us we're real people this is not our thing of wanting to be scammed so we definitely don't want other people to scam and we're trying to enlighten people on that there is a different way so links are in the description i'll see you in the next video